So with a huge final round effort, Tina Bassett is going to walk away with first place. Let's go down to the bottom of the hill. Tina, have you ever pulled that trick before? I've tried it many times, but I've never landed it until today. Well, what does that mean, a trip to the Olympics? Um, I think anything could happen. Tina, given your acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared and your... Oh gosh, it's that sports figures guy. <laughs> does he even get a press pass? Sure, all you have to do is use the equation velocity 1 equals velocity 2 plus acceleration times time. What are they even talking about? I don't know. Come on, okay. I'll tell you all about it. Figures. Put your brain in the game. <laughs> in the old days, people used to go down snow-covered mountains on two skis. It went a little something like this. But now people use this, a snowboard, when they want to hit the slopes. It looks a little something like this. The first modern snowboard with bindings to hold your feet on was created in 1977, and snowboarding was off. Now, it's different from skiing because your feet go across the board instead of parallel, like a skateboard. You can turn by leaning on your toe or leaning back on your heel. Now, you can ride regular with your left foot forward going downhill, or you can ride what we call goofy foot with your right foot forward going downhill. I'm going to ride regular. There are all different types of events really hot riders can compete in. There's the half pipe, and staircasing, and big hair, and big air. You can see why they called big air, because it's like they're floating on air, like they're flying. So how does big air work? How do they hang up in the air like that? What do a basketball player, a snowboarder, and a snowball have in common? They're all projectiles. In science, when something gets launched into the air and has no means of self-propulsion, it's called a projectile. Ah! When Tina and Mike grab some serious big air, they're projectiles. A guy with a jetpack is not. A projectile? Not a projectile. This jump launches the snowboarder. Now, when we launch a projectile, it makes a path in the air. We call that path a trajectory. A trajectory is just a path that the object makes as it goes through the air. Now, to take a look at why snowboarders seem to hang in the air, we have to look at the trajectory of a projectile. These guys behind me are totally excellent projectiles. They're Tina Bassich and Mike Bassich. Tina's a professional rider, and she took first place at the 95 Mount St. Anne World Cup Halfpipe and has been voted one of the top three women snowboarders by Trans World Snowboarding. Mike is a professional, too, and he recently took third at the US Open Big Air competition in Stratton, Vermont. Today we are talking about big air, and that's what you guys get in competition. So how are these competitions judged? Well, usually we have two out of three jumps, and we're going for height, and we're trying to do spinning tricks, flips, anything with the biggest difficulty, and always landing it. Always landing. Okay, so the key is you want to be up in the air as long as possible because you can do more tricks, score more points, right? Yep. What do you do to make sure you get maximum air? The best would be your speed going into the jump and your lift off the jump is the most important thing. Okay, cool. Once you're up in the air, is there anything you can do to stay up in the air longer? I would say once you leave the ground, you can't do anything until you land again. All right, so what happens before the jump determines what hang time you get. Right. Hmm. The thing about a projectile is once it's launched, it can no longer control its own flight. When a projectile is in flight, it comes under certain physical laws that are going to determine how far, how high, and how long it can stay in the air. Hey, watch it up there. Now, 
When we launch a projectile, whether it's a tennis ball or a snowboarder, it follows a very specific trajectory. Now that path makes a shape, and we call that shape a parabola. A parabola is a beautiful thing. It isn't an arc. It's not a semicircle like a rainbow because it wouldn't make a full circle if we continued the line. And every parabola is different. It can look like this, or this, or this. But they're always parabolas. And remember, every time we launch a projectile, it makes a parabola. Ah! Gravity is what makes a parabola. Gravity is always pulling down. It's there all the time, right? 24-7. Every second of every day, gravity is pulling down. Whoa! <laughs> gravity. Whew. And gravity is always pulling down with the same force. Now, when we drop something, it accelerates, right? This tennis ball is stationary. When we drop it, it picks up speed. It accelerates. The higher I drop it from, the more speed it gets the more it accelerates. The rate at which something drops is called the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is one of those physical constants. It's the same all the time. And we have a measurement for it. 32 feet per second per second. 32 feet per second per second just means that an object speeds up, accelerates, by 32 feet per second every second it's in the air. If an object falls for one second, it will reach a speed of 32 feet per second. If it falls for two seconds, it will reach a speed of 64 feet per second. And if it falls for three seconds, it would be falling at 96 feet per second. 96 feet per second is 65 miles per hour. Zero to 65 in three seconds is a lot of acceleration. Now, to make it easier to write and to say, acceleration due to gravity is usually referred to as 32 feet per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity is true for any object we drop, no matter how much it weighs. If it weren't for air resistance, this duck and this feather would drop at exactly the same rate. For our purposes today, we'll assume that air resistance isn't a factor. Of course it is, but uh, let's pretend it is. <laughs> okay, you guys, so I talked about goofy foot and regular foot. So how do I figure out what I am? I can show you how to test it. You okay. got to stand like this. All right. And All right. I'm going to push you. Whoa. Left foot forward. That means you're regular I'm foot. I'm regular. That's the foot that goes forward so on the board. So I'm not goofy. All right. So <laughs> we got this. We got goofy. We got regular. Do we, what other kind of terminology, snowboarding terminology do we got here? Shredding. Shredding. Now what is shredding exactly? Shredding's more of kind of the, oh, I'm just going out and Riding the whole mountain, using the whole mountain with your buddies. And okay, you get, like we're gonna go out. Let's go out shredding. Yeah. Did I use it correctly? Okay. So that's what happens when we drop something and it moves down. But how does the acceleration due to gravity affect an object that's moving upward? Gravity will still pull down on it, so it'll decelerate it. Right. A projectile, as it rises, gets pulled down by gravity. Now, if the acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared, at what rate is gravity going to slow the object down? 32 feet per second squared. Okay, let's try. Okay. Ah! This snowball were launched at a speed of 96 feet per second. After one second, gravity would have slowed it by 32 feet per second to a speed of 64 feet per second. After two seconds, gravity would have slowed it another 32 feet per second. And after its third second, gravity would have slowed it by 96 feet per second. Okay, now if a snowball gets launched at 96 feet per second, and after three seconds in the air, gravity slows it down by 96 feet per second, at what speed is it traveling now? Zero. Right, and then what happens? Well, it will stop going up and start going down at 32 feet per second squared. Right, and we could draw a map of the snowball's trajectory like this. The trajectory of the snowball is a parabola, one that's almost straight up and straight down like this. After its speed reached zero, it would start to come back down, accelerating by 32 feet per second every second. The key to the shape of a parabola and the key to hang time in big air is up here at the top of the parabola. There's a period between where gravity is just about to stop it, where it is stopped, and where it first starts to accelerate down 
that a projectile is moving so little up or down that it's just about floating. So Mike, how come this jump doesn't go straight up? If you had a jump going straight up at 90 degrees, it'd be called a quarter pipe. And that'd send you straight up and straight back down on top of the jump. Oh, okay, all right. So Tina, why don't we go a little off straight up, like say 80 degrees, wouldn't, wouldn't that give you the biggest air? Well, you want a jump that puts you up and out. That's how you get the most air time. If it went straight up, you wouldn't get as much air. That's not quite right. Really? No, actually, you get more hang time, bigger air, if the jump goes straight up. For real? For real. When a boarder approaches the jump, they build up speed. What the jump does is convert that speed into vertical, up, and horizontal, out, components. If the jump went straight up, all of the boarder's speed would be converted to vertical speed and they'd go the highest and be in the air the longest. If the jump is less than 90 degrees, like this one, some of the vertical speed is going to be sacrificed for horizontal speed. You don't go as high or stay in the air as long, but you travel out farther. But you know, it really feels like you get more hang time on a jump that puts you up and out. Well, there's a reason for that. Huck a switch rodeo, dude. This is our Mike Bassich action figure. Now, when Mike takes a jump, he's traveling in two directions at once, up in a vertical motion and out in a horizontal motion. Gravity only affects the vertical motion. The horizontal motion isn't affected by gravity. Now, these two motions are independent of each other. They have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with one another. Nothing, not a bookcase. And we can prove it. Jennifer here has a tennis ball. If we time its drop, we get a half second. Now we'll have Doug uh, drop a tennis ball while moving. Here he comes. Oh, and we still get a half second, even though the ball was traveling horizontally as it fell. The second snowball dropped vertically and horizontally, but it still hit the ground in a half second. What we proved is that a horizontal motion doesn't keep you up in the air any longer. The two motions are independent from each other. Right, Mike. So how come it seems like you get more air time when you go up and out instead of just up? Well, to figure that out, Tina, we'll have to analyze your parabola. Okay. When you leave the jump, you're traveling in two directions at once, right? Up with a vertical motion and out with a horizontal motion. The only force acting on the horizontal motion is air resistance, and it's so slight we'll ignore it. But the vertical motion is being acted on by gravity, and you can't ignore gravity. After the first second in the air, you'll be this high and have moved horizontally this far. Because you're being slowed by gravity, after two seconds in the air, you'll only be this high, but will have still traveled the same distance horizontally, putting you here. During the third second in the air, your vertical speed will be slowing to zero, but your horizontal motion hasn't changed at all. Now you reach the point in your jump where gravity has overcome the vertical motion. You're truly hanging, but still moving horizontally. Gradually, gravity accelerates your descent like this. Now check this out. This is what Mike and Tina's trajectory would look like if they went off an almost vertical jump. And this is the trajectory off an angled jump. Now look at the difference here at the top of the parabola. On the vertical jump, it goes to a very, very sharp peak. But here on the horizontal jump, it gets stretched out across the air. It's extended. It gives the illusion that Mike and Tina are traveling through the air without going up and down, like they're flying. This is what we call hang time. So it all has to do with the shape of your parabola. But for one instant, you said I was just floating there, not going up or down, right? Well, yeah, just for a fraction of a second. I live for that. This guy here is Dan Malstrom, and he designs jumps for big air events. So Dan, how do you decide at which angle to launch the jumpers? Well, we look at two things. We look at the hill, the angle of the hill coming down, and mm -hmm. then the angle that we need to get the rider the air and distance that they need to be able to pull the tricks they want to do in the air. Okay, so you take the jumper's trajectory into your equation. You work that in. Yeah, trajectory is very important because that is what determines how far and how high they'll go in the air. Okay, Dan, is it safe to say that you know a thing or two about parabolas? Oh yeah, you could say I know a little bit about parabolas. There are parabolic trajectories in tons of sports. In fact, most sports involve parabolas. <laughs> Thank you.
What's another name for some of the jumps you do? Anything we got rodeo? A hawk and flip is a pipe trick for in a half pipe. Um, it was named after Sir J. Hawkinson. He kind of invented the trick. And it's kind of like a rodeo, but you're going backwards, fakie, and you do a flip with a 540 landing forward back in the half pipe. What if someone does a really, very, really cool jump? Do you like, you what know, is it? That was sick. That was sick. Not like <laughs> you feel nauseous. Like no. that's like cool. Yeah, that exactly. was sick. Exactly. Anything else? You got it now. That was rad. Did they say that? No. Rad's a, good a little start. overrated, but. <laughs> rad's go, overrated. Go. I like sick. That was sick. Okay, guys, so what did we learn? That gravity will pull down at 32 feet per second every second. And that makes a shape called a parabola when you jump. Very good. And that when you jump, there is a vertical and horizontal force. And those two forces are independent of each other. Whew, you guys are amazing. So to ride, you've got to understand parabolas. Besides, a parabola is such a cool thing, a shape made by gravity. So the next time you're checking out a sport, make sure to take a sec to check out the parabola. Ah. Well, I'd like to thank Tina and Mike Bassett. Okay. Dan Malstrin of the Brighton Ski Center, and of course our students. Preston, Houston, Stacy, and Kristen for helping us out today on ESPN2 Sports Figures, Big Air Rule.